Namaste. Pranam Bhavanji, good morning again. And thank you for being with us today again. I hope you're doing well and winters have set in India. So we are still in that phase. You know, winters is that phase where you kind of sit and hibernate and reflect a lot. That's what nature teaches us. Um, so we will go ahead with what we have been doing for a while. For everyone who's new, we are studying the Living Hanuman by Pavan Kumar Mishraji. And we are doing the Sri Hanuman Chalisa, verse by verse. And today we are on verse four. And like always, I will read the intro and Pavanji will give us his uh, insight that is not only from the book, but also something that has, you know, that he has um, collected and, you know, absorbed as a person over years, understanding the meaning of it. So I will now read the verse four, which says, Kanchan Varana Biraj Subesa, Kanan Kundal Kunchit Kesa. That's the exact verse. And then there is an English version of it, which says, Body yours has golden glow, Raiments as dew on a bow, rings in ears to and fro, curly hair cascading low. I mean, this is such a nice, it's like, like, it's like a nice rhyming poem. And the in point message from this, that is our takeaway, is that I turn out in my best attire. I look my best at all times. I am the messenger of the universe, the envoy of God. So... Very beautiful. I read this, uh, like I was telling you earlier, I always read it a few days before we do our session so that it sort of absorbs into me and I mull over it in a few days. And when I read this, um, there was so much connectivity, obviously, because you have you have re related it to Sri Suktam here and it talks about the beauty of Devi. And I'm sure all women specifically who listen to this, they will see a different meaning to it when they hear it from you. So please tell us something about it. So as I said, Kanchan Varan Viraj Subesa. Kanchan Varan. Kanchan means gold. Varan, Varn. Uh, color, glow. Kanchan Varan Viraj Subesa. Kanan Kundal Kunchit Kesa. So here, uh, a few more. In fact, in the previous verse, uh, we were discussing about uh, the qualities of an ambassador. Mahavir, Vikram, Bajrangi, Kumati Nivar, Sumati Kesangi. So Mahavir, Valiant, Vikram, Bajrangi. Uh, all these are qualities of the ambassador of God, envoy of God, which each one of us are. We are all ambassadors and boys of the universe. Uh, we represent the whole universe. In fact, we are the universe which is conscious at the point of our existence. This verse is much more, uh, it looks much more mundane. Uh, it is just saying that Hanumanji has a golden glow. His body glows with a golden glow. That means he has great health. He has great health in literal sense. Kanchan Baran, Bidad Subesa, he's well turned out. He's, he's wearing good, Clothes, good accessories. Kanchan Varan Virat Subesa. Subesa in good wish, in a good turnout. Kanan Kundal is wearing earrings. He wears earrings in his earlobes. Kanan Kundal. Kunchit Kesa. His hair is curly, beautiful, hanging low like that as it is given in the translation. Uh, emphasis here is on appearance. You know, uh, the ABC of success in modern world is A for appearance, B for behavior, C for competence. The first thing that meets the eye is your appearance. And within the first fraction of seconds, fraction of, sec of a second, uh, a person makes an impression about you who you are, how you are, just by seeing you. So uh, not to take a carefree attitude of, uh, I don't care what I dress, I don't care how I look like, I don't care how my hair is, I'll wear what I want to, which is now becoming quite uh, common, no? Here it is saying, no, I'll turn out to the best that I can turn out not only for myself, but also as a respect to the person I'm meeting. 
suppose uh, somebody is walking in the streets, Bond Street in London in Swimbear, for example. Not that it, you can't say anything to him, but that is not the appropriate dressing for that place. Similarly, somebody wears a three-piece suit and walks on the beach. That is not appropriate. the appropriate dress for the beach to be appropriately turned out, to be appropriately dressed. That is one layer of the meaning. At the other layer, the hint is kanchan badan, the golden glow. Here, the hint is that glow that permeates through his skin, that glow is of the goddess Shakti seated within him in his heart. That's the glow that is permeating through him. Without that Shakti, because he's Shiva himself, and Shiva is one, without the Shakti, Shiva can do nothing. Here, he's Shiva himself doing everything. So that Shakti, that ability to do the potential which is seated in his heart is expressed as a glow going beyond going beyond the boundaries going beyond his physical boundary of the skin golden glow and uh, kanan kundal of course uh, very simply said earrings were fashionable in those days but um, also uh, it has a lot of um, 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 in acupuncture, the position of uh, uh, piercing of the earlobe uh, determines which organ are we activating. And there are various places from where we uh, pierce the, at where we, at the points at which we pierce our ears. Many, many women know that already. Many men also now wear uh, uh, ear accessories, they know that. So uh, ears, our ears are the mirrors of our whole body. Our entire body is reflected in the ears. So they are, so at the earlobe is the central, central meridian, central point to pierce that and wear it. I'm not recommending everybody should get an ear piercing done, but if you wish to do that, it is well in tune uh, with the uh, Ayurvedic and even uh, with the Chinese medicine understanding of our body's physiology. So uh, also in the book, I have mentioned about um, using the earlobes as our cross holding and then doing sit-ups. Uh, it is known as super brain yoga. A lot of research has happened on that, of how this cross holding of the ears and sitting up increases brain function, longevity, etc. These are all hinted. These are all as a matter of hint. And kunchit kesa. Curly hair, well-groomed hair. Here, curly hair shows his soft nature. In astrology, we say uh, somebody who has curly hair, wavy hair, has a high moon and Venus energy flowing through him. So moon and Venus energy, these are soft feminine energies and uh, it shows kindness, compassion, love, love for art, finer things of life. Uh, Hanumanji was, is considered to be also the founder of Indian classical music in some traditions. There is a whole Hanuman Parampara, Hanuman Parampara in Indian classical music. So uh, he had that soft side to him, the art side to him, the soft side, the comp compassionate side to him. But overall, even if you don't go so deep into it, just at the at the surface of it, the message is to dress well, to turn out well, to stand up, to dress up, and show up. That is what is being indicated here. See, this is why I love our sessions because, like you said, it's not in the it's not in this chapter where you have mentioned that you know he's like, uh, or or he's represented in many uh, in the in some scriptures he's represented as like the. Um, the introducer of classical music. It's, it's not come here at all. And see, this is why I feel that when knowledge or wisdom is absorbed over years, it is like a, it's like archived in the back of the brain. And when you start talking about it, although the book is really huge and it by itself is a lot of information, but still when we do our sessions, you come up with these, you know, 
if they are like they are like bouts coming out of some hidden messages from uh, from the verses and this is why i feel that this is special when you speak about uh, things which are not even written like i would now look into it from that angle as well but yes i did love this chapter in terms of the uh, you giving the even how to get the ear pierced the beauty of on what auspicious day and how it should be done like the intricacies of it is given but the part that i really love the most uh, which you already said that you know um, although fashion is really in trend right now and um, you had written that but how how it says that uh, you know in a deeper sense attention has to be directed to the one who is wearing um and you have quoted a few ysl app from fashion as well but the part that i really loved was the there is a line which says the inner glow is like that of a firefly and which is what the golden glow you were talking about uh, it's like a firefly which cannot be extinguished by external circumstances like rain or wind uh, unlike other fires that can be put out every seeker must aspire to acquire the golden glow of inner light and i think that you know when you kind of see people who have calm composure uh, they kind of radiate this energy or you know it's probably it's something that maybe not as completely visible but when you just meet them it's just an infectious soft warm affectionate energy and you are you have related it to the goddess from the shri suktam where you've said the hiranya varnam and i'm studying the shri suktam right now so it's very beautifully transcended i really want to ask you this question for a while now how like how many years did it kind of take you for you to come to the point where you you were able to see through the meaning in different things but the same meaning just asking out of curiosity <laughs> i will say this is uh, directly the grace uh, of my guru in fact once i had asked him a similar question really? which was interrelating to something and he told me pavan for answering this question you need to give me a paper of the size of a football field and leave me alone then i will be able to draw the interconnections and show you how what is interconnected to what and how the whole is interconnected so uh, it is only through reflection that you arrive at these insights it is not written in any other book exactly uh, uh, but it is uh, through reflection through quiet reflection uh, in stillness which we in our class we talk together about in when we are still that something reveals that the goddess reveals herself in forms of insights in flashes of insights and information extra information that we might not uh, find in the pages of the book i mean But you the fact that uh, you even pointed it out i really uh, love you for this that you you got caught by that interconnection of hidden nirvana her name swarnaradatta sujam yes she is here in nirvana she is the golden glowing mother so only the golden glow belongs only to her and if anywhere for example uh, say a card is part and it has a particular registration number by looking at the registration number you will say the owner of the card is so and so and must be around similarly where whatever has a golden glow you can say goddess is around it is her presence that is imparting that good i mean as a reader and as a student uh, it really um, you know invokes that curiosity in me where where you see the same meaning transcend through every word or the connectivity of all the forms of god that we see the god and goddesses how they flow into like into a, like a they confluence into a singular thing and uh, that is something even after 3 4 years of meditation i still feel that i look dumb so many times i <laughs> the ideas don't strike but there are very few moments in the year i will say not even every day where information just flows to you and you can you you'll be like ah okay this is what it meant you know like you can see the connectedness but it is there are very few moments. moments and you have already covered the yoga pose which i which i truly loved and i am going to practice it because anyways i do squats as a part of our daily routine where you say the cross cross leg then you talk about when we hold it in a certain position and we squat how uh, the meridians of the body get activated and how it's related to that so the yoga pose we have already discussed um 
the in journey question that are the favorite ones because they provoke us truly from within they rattle you if you sit with them in reflection they will rattle you uh, the first question was the one that made me think of mary kondo because the first question it says that i take an inventory of my clothes what is the maximum number of items of clothing of different kinds my wardrobe should have which clothes can still be used and repaired and which clothes are need replacement and what can be given away and what accessories do i need to buy to enhance my turnout presence i mean from a maximalist because i used to work in fashion to a minimalist where i live you know with um, the concept of what can i reuse and i upcycle a lot of things now but when i read this question uh, i truly thought that it is so difficult to move from maximalism to minimalism and then enjoy minimalism as such so it has taken me good time out of time and i think these are the good introspective questions for young the younger generation i mean the 20 to 30s i mean i am not that old but still i feel the 20 to 30s is a good generation to reflect on these questions and think about uh, you know applying the japanese way of living you know relishing every single thing for long upcycling it and uh, reusing it um which is wonderful and you have spoken about how this chapter speaks about the appearance uh, so you have also in the in journey questions asked us to reflect upon the skin in general appearance the hair care program how do i take and for a very long time i just feel that you know uh, i used to feel when i started meditating that you know i should kind of drop the act of getting ready and showing off and being posh and now i realize uh, that you know it is something that has to come from within you whatever you are comfortable with not because you have to appeal someone or to the certain level of society so this these are the good questions where i feel about but the best one was how do i achieve the golden glow of good health and i think that is truly discipline i mean you can motivate yourself but when i reflected on these questions last night for for the third or the fourth time you know i never write the answers quickly because i take time to you know just ponder over the questions for a certain duration uh, even though we all try to be in a good regimen and be disciplined about it but it, it is a struggle with our everyday life i mean it's not something that comes naturally to us at all um so i am definitely going to work on the last part of the third question which says how can i make my food sleep exercise meditation even more effective and regular because we obviously do it it's not that we don't eat food or we don't sleep or we don't exercise but how to make it more effective so can you tell me that after the navratras what is that you have done that you have emphasized on making it more effective than your usual have you done something different myself yes yes i have become more regular with my yoga practice ah okay only regularity I see. That's the thing. Regular part is the part. You know, we often we shirk away. You know, thinking it's okay today. I had a busy day. I can skip this. I think that's the part where you step up and step up and show up for yourself regularly. Uh, and the last point, the takeaway, my action point from this, which is, which is, which are like affirmations, is to take care of my grooming and appearance and turn out in my best attire, because I am the envoy of God. and with that meaning i feel uh, i feel less guilty <laughs> in being dressed up thinking mm-hmm. that i am a messenger of god and i need to show up as a representative of god in this universe not only in appearance but in internal behavior and what radiates out of me as a person so thank you so much for the golden glow and thank you for enlightening us and taking us one step closer to reflecting um into ourselves and working on the inner glow that's what we all need truly really. thank you so much for today it was short and sweet but it was truly beautiful thank, thank you, you.